Hello and welcome to another edition of Son of Kaiju Review. I'm Protomet. I'm Tank. And today we will be talking about not a kaiju movie, but just a tokusatsu movie. Garo Red Requiem. Oh yeah. This movie came out a number of years after the first season of Garo had finished airing. And it looks fantastic. Just putting that out there right there. Oh yeah, it's... Like, the show's quality is quite good, but it's... This kind of tops it a little bit, because it has more of a budget. Yeah, the, bu <laughs> the movie budget it got gives you a lot of visual flair. Mm -hmm. But I do still think that they use the same costume for Garo as yeah, they did from they... the original show. Mm -hmm. This movie was subsequently followed up with a second season of Garo, which uh, we'll talk about sooner than you may think. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> So, pretty much the movie starts off with a a woman being followed by two people. Oh wait, one guy, sorry. <laughs> one guy. Then she encounters a second guy and asks yeah. for his help. But then they both attack her. <laughs> and they release a little light ball, energy ball, and it goes inside her and activates a... It's, it's how the Makai Society indicate if humans have become horrors or not uh, by seeing if the writing in their eyes show. kind of shows up in their eyes. Yep. If it does, then yeah, this person is no longer human. They are dead and possessed by a monster. <laughs> yes. And the monster that's actually inside this woman is massive. Not kaiju size, but still pretty big for that host. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that tends to be the case with the horrors. Yeah. They're, they're, the costume designs for the horrors are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, costume slash CG. What the, you know. it, it depends on the horror. Some utilize CG, others use costume mm -hmm. suitmation. But it... Oh. <laughs> oh, they spent some money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, a... They ended up... Uh, Beating the woman portion. With the help of a Makai priestess, Rekka. Rekka is... And uh, like a mechanical dog creature called a Goryu. Goryu. <laughs> <laughs> By far, one of the funniest looking things I've ever seen. And you can just see some more of it. Yep. Just let me tell you. <laughs> um, then, uh, they... They pick up the baby to help take care for it when a man wearing a white coat tells them to... Ha Hand over that baby. <laughs> <laughs> and at which point the uh, Makai priestess, Rekka, realizes that they're not done fighting horrors. <laughs> nope. The baby was a gigant that got gigantic thingy I was talking about earlier. <laughs> With, like, some sort of guillotine for a head, yeah. <laughs> practically. <laughs> guillotine, drawbridge-looking... It was a weird design. I think the creature was called Babel. Babel. It was one of the apostle horrors that worked for another more powerful horror called Karma. Which we'll, the, get, we'll which, get to her when she comes. Which the man in white, Koga Saijima, has come to hunt. Yep. Koji is, um, Garo. He is the lead character yes. of the original series mm -hmm. and of this movie. He is the Golden Knight, Garo. Mm -hmm. And, whoo, boy. He, he, go ahead. Go. Go for it. He, when he transforms to, well, he literally takes it on and holds his own without being transformed. And when he realizes, oh, okay, I guess I should. In, he just dominates the thing. <laughs> <laughs> beats it. They don't they don't die. They get sealed up again. Yes, that's a, a bit of a caveat for the Garo series. The The horrors are endless. Mm -hmm. After they're defeated, they're merely sealed away. It's not super important for this movie. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a detail presented in the original series. That was a bit more relevant there than in later entries, but... Mm. It uh, is kind of important given that it's basically an endless fight against the monsters. Yeah. But one that the Makai Society are willing to combat. Yeah. 
it's a never ending war. But okay. they've but they've got very good reasons for doing it. Exactly. <laughs> Which gets explained later on in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Koji ends up joining these three It's Koga by Koga. The way. Koji. Koga. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Kind of guy got the ga there because yeah. that's the that's like the fangs of his name. Ka <laughs> <laughs> <Ta>, koga, <laughs> and you know he pretty much tells them that he's searching for a um, what's her name? Uh, Karma. Karma. That's a mere um nightmare. 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 Monster. Uh, mirror of horror. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> A powerful one at that yes. too. <laughs> um, this movie is not for kids. Oh no, the Garo franchise in general is for adults. It doesn't quite have any gratuitous sexual content, but there is quite a bit of nudity and violence. Yes, yeah. blood, blood, lots blood. of blood, blood. I mean, not like a, not like a horror, movie. not like a splatter film. No. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely like, yeah, no, this is... Uh, this, yeah. This is definitely not for kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something which is obvious if you just watch the first episode, because it's kind of got it all. The violence, the oh, blood, yeah. the nudity. <laughs> yes. It's... How I say... Uh, if you're into that, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I am honestly glad that Garo managed to be the first adult-oriented uh, tokusatsu show to actually go beyond its the single season that it was given. Because there were a number of other lesser attempts at making an adult-oriented tokusatsu series. You got the likes of Vanny Knights, uh, Rosetta, Voice Lugger, and they all fall short. But Garo, Garo kind of holds on to a heart. <laughs> And it really helps that Keita Mamiya did a fantastic job just designing the series in general. Like he, it's it's his work on this that made me fall in love with him as a visual artist. Oh, so they <sighs> We also get introduced to Karma's uh two hench people, mm-hmm. Kurusu and Shion. Yes. Who are Basically, bringing her victims to feed on. Yes. Uh, at one point, he, he ends up taking a. No, it's mostly just um, the girl that. Shion is mostly going out to find the victim. Yes. I think Kurusu is, tends to lure the victims in. Yeah. Like from if, the if club. They're, if they're female, he's an attractive fellow. Oh, yes. Um, uh, he's played by the same actor who played uh, Naoki Tachibana, Time Fire from Mirai Sentai Time Ranger. Oh. Uh, was so, that was something I didn't realize until <laughs> this rewatch of the series, so. Yeah, so they, the females kind of see him, get kind of attracted to him, and then he kind of flirts his way to the, look into the mirror. You'll see your... Your heart's desire. desire. <laughs> There's one point, there's a woman that wants to be rich and famous and... Not that that wants to win a beauty contest yeah. or something. And all end up falling victim to this mirror monster. Yep. Just... It's drug into the mirror. Into the mirror world and then they kind of get haunted for a little while and then she takes their soul, pretty much. Now, Koga, to his uh, credit, actually asks the Makai priests for help in locating Karma, which he plans to eliminate because that's what his orders are. Yeah. But, uh, Makai? Reka, Reka, Reka is a bit... He- is a bit uh, hesitant? Uh, what? I don't want to say hesitant. She's... It's, that's not quite the right word. She's a bit bullheaded about it. He, oh. Because she... She wants to kill her because apparently she took her father and she he was a a knight right mm-hmm. and she does have some uh, issue with the fact that uh, women can't become Makai knights which it's, a later it's not a sexist thing 
Yeah, there is a later entry in the series that actually explains that wi- that females can't even hold the swords that mm-hmm. are required to be, be a Makai knight. Mm-hmm. It's a biological thing. Like they, There is one female in the entire series who manages to wield a sword, and it's only because her dad's arm bone is implanted into her own arm. So, <laughs> so she's got a piece of... Mm-hmm. And he, even that's not a perfect uh, solution no. as... <laughs> As it starts to lose its effect, efficacy. But that's a later show, which I've actually covered years ago. Uh, Zero Black Blood. Um, they do, like, catch up to some of the... Or they at least battle a couple more... Um, I keep wanting to say nightmares, but horrors. <laughs> yeah, Koga manages to... Uh, spot Xion when trying to claim a new victim mm-hmm. and ma- and thus gives chase until the horror until Koga's ring, Zaruba manages to uh, stop sensing the horror mm-hmm. at which point they realize that there's a barrier on this nightclub called Crime <laughs> it's, a, okay, it's a clever clever name and in this nightclub uh Apparently, you can do anything. Yeah, Rekka joins up with Koga. They realize that uh, the barrier ta- talismans that were in place were created by a Makai priest. So there's a traitor in their midst. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, they take the seal off and they're able to enter. They... Uh, He's just nodding his head because it's it's difficult to describe what ends up happening, but the fight scene between uh, Koga and uh, the male hench person Kurusu yeah. is great, especially once he transforms. Yes, <laughs> that is great. And uh, they actually Ruka ends up uh, Rekka. Rekka, sorry, get close. <laughs> Rekka ends up getting taken into the room where the mirror is. Because they initially don't realize she's a priestess until she tries to break the mirror. Yep. Doesn't quite work out for them, but... No. So, they all start fighting, and then, you know, the lady henchman ends up taking the mirror, and that's when the big fight between... Because she uses the mirror to reflect glass, uh, reflect light onto broken glass throughout the room to... Basically infect a bunch of people into brainwashing them to to fight against the Makai people. Yeah. And this is, okay, this one is, it's an awesome movie. I recommend you guys at least give it a watch because we're not giving it justice. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this is, this is definitely a much more visually impressive movie. It's, mm-hmm. it's difficult to straight up describe it because oh, the fight scenes are mm-hmm. fantastic and it's well paced <laughs> for a movie. Yes. Um, they do, fair enough, they, the good guys lose that round. Yeah, it uh, doesn't help that during the fight, Koga attempts to summon his Garo armor, and that winds up getting sealed inside a mirror, Mm -hmm. preventing him from using it, and he gets stabbed through the chest Mm -hmm. by Karusu's tail spike. Yep. And they have to retreat, pretty much, and... Right, but not before uh, Koga manages to rescue Rekka from Karusu by basically stabbing himself even further onto the tail yeah. spike. He slid down. <laughs> just like, shh, ah. Grab his sword, cut off the tentacles to free Rekka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause the bad guys to retreat, but not without cost. <laughs> yes. Then the, the high priest gets called out for being the traitor. Yeah, they... Koga and Rekka reveal that there's a traitor. Of, initially, they think that it might be Shigoto, but the audience has shown earlier in the movie that it's the older guy, Akaza. Yeah. Because his wife and daughter had died, and Ko- Karma was basically showing him visions of them still alive, which was breaking his... Uh, <laughs> heart, but... Breaking his heart, spirit, and everything else. <laughs> which is... A, which is another way of a good way of showing that even though the Makai society tried to be without 
any darkness in them, they are still human and are susceptible to yeah. to the temptations of the horrors, mm -hmm. which was actually present in the original series too, and mm -hmm. pretty much throughout. But this is a good reminder that that people are fallible. Yeah. Koga, for his credit, actually uh, chastises Rekka for wanting to target the horrors vic the horrors puppets during yeah they're humans they're they're because the brainwashed people were only brainwashed they weren't turned into horrors like yeah. what is normally the case mm -hmm. with these but but koga basically explains that by saving Rekka, he saved every person mm. that she has the potential to save in the future yeah and that that is why her life matters mm -hmm. to not focus on petty on the small revenge of of avenging her father's death, but rather to focus on stopping it from claiming any more victims. There is a scene earlier than the scene we're talking about is when uh, Rekka pretty much challenges Seku, Sekai, uh, Sekai Shikato. Shikato to a kind of a little like fight thing. She has her like paintbrush flute thing <laughs> and he has his sword. She kind of holds so Koga, it. not Shigito, then. Oh. <laughs> I was like, when, when does Rekka fight Shigito? I don't remember that. No. <laughs> Koga. Koga, yeah. And, uh, she gets pretty much beaten, but not in a bad way, but more to be embarrassed. Right. It was a wound to her ego. Right. And pretty much said... What he pretty much told her, you're not strong enough now, but you'll get there. <laughs> right. Because she definitely shows potential in this movie, and mm. later entries do show her getting more adept at being an, a priest. As a... <laughs> she is a cool character in oh, this yeah. movie, but, the, but it does a good job of humbling her in the best way mm -hmm. <laughs> to better herself as a character. And they have to figure out a way to get into the mirror. The, when you have to get into the mirror, you have to be dead. Though there is another method, some sort of sword, which looks a bit more like a solid bell rather than a sword. Yeah. But th it's, it's a Makai society mm -hmm. thing, so... Mm -hmm. It's don't a, question it too much. Demon sword, I think it was. A the demon sword, or I don't know. A, anyway, it's it's one that Akaza has, and mm -hmm. he had he had revealed that he had it before being outed as a traitor. Mm -hmm. So they and pretty much they they're fighting to get his armor back. Right. So basically, they have to storm whatever the the place that. Karma is holding up now. Mm -hmm. They end up fighting her henchmen, and the lady one ends up being defeated. I There is one good moment, where I feel, where Akaza feels like he has to take on the responsibility of stopping Karma all on his own, and Koga tells him, no, mm -hmm. we, know, we know that you've done a bad thing mm -hmm. but the best thing for you to do now is to not basically go on a suicide mission but to try and bet make the future better mm -hmm. live so that yeah so basically they'll work together to infiltrate this building that she's holed up in yes and uh they they end up fighting other type of horrors that appear? Like minion horrors. Yeah. That are mostly illusion, but like... It's like Naruto's Shadow Clone Jutsu. Ah. <laughs> okay. Like, they, they're they're not real, but they're real enough <laughs> <laughs> to pose a threat. Uh, Shiguto and Akaza utilize the Goryu mm -hmm. to fight. So, yeah, you got to see more of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... When I, yesterday when we were watching this, you know, I confused Lucas on what I said. I want to see those robot doggies again. I thought he was talking about like something from some other show or something, but no, he was talking about this. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, well, they're not really dogs, but they're things. 
It's like, now I know what you're meaning. <laughs> For sure. And they come in hordes. <laughs> oh, yeah, they got a few of them. Uh, the f- Rekka fights Shion and ends up winning by stabbing her. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Her uh, horror form was a little bit more different than more feminine looking compared to... Yeah, they. it's pretty much just Shion, but now with wings. <laughs> yeah. Just like small backpack wings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that, it was, to be, to be a bit fair, she wasn't like a full-on horror. She was just like a horror henchwoman. Mm. As revealed when Kurushu's backstory is revealed, and turns out he was actually an old artist who was married to Xion before she died, and he couldn't get over that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you are not Xion. Xion, Xion. <laughs> so he ended up murdering one of his models and yeah. ended up becoming a horror as a result. Mm-hmm. Which allowed him to become uh, Nauta's actor from Time Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so, and every time I think of think of him now, I can't help but think of the opening sting for his insert theme from that show, <laughs> Time Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> oh, they they actually get into the mirror world. With the help of Akaza and Sh- well, Akaza and Shigeto don't arrive until after they get it, but yeah. Koga and Rekka work together to get yes, the mirror they, He pretty much throws the handle of the sword and it unfolds opens. and oh, makes an opening in the mirror. Yeah. It <laughs> doesn't make a lick of fucking sense. But, but okay. it's Garo! Yeah. Don't question it, yeah. it's Garo! <laughs> <laughs> It's like, this whole society has its own set of rules of how things work. So don't worry about it. A wizard did it, basically. <laughs> He's able to... They, they get into the mirror world, and uh, they pretty much battle... God, I keep getting a blank on her name. Karma? Karma, yeah. And... Uh, He's just fighting a giant naked lady. So it's the Messiah all over again. <laughs> For anybody who's watched the original Garo, that was the final boss, Messiah. <laughs> a giant naked lady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that is one uh, good reason to switch over to the podcast format. I don't have to worry about censoring anything visually. <laughs> yeah, we, we... Back in the day, like... We just simply cut... I don't think we ever really uh, found ourselves in a situation where we had to include any nudity. I think the only instance I, I think could... was Q. Yeah, that was the only one that comes to mind. I think everything else was otherwise pretty safe for work. But... Yeah. <laughs> but this movie has moments that I'm glad we're merely talking about rather than just. Yeah. I don't want to uh, strike against a channel or anything. No. And that's, that's okay. <laughs> Not, not the strike, but <laughs> right. And you know, less work at, at on this. Yeah. <laughs> and no offense to the old kaiju reviews, um, but we had scripts, and it took felt like it took forever sometimes. But no, no we just say what we think about it. Yeah, the 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 get, getting the videos claimed and blocked was. Probably the best thing that happened to this particular show. <laughs> but that's an aside tangent. Koga fights against the giant naked lady with the mirror crotch. Well, mirror shard crotch. <laughs> it's like, you don't want to go anywhere near there, so let me tell you that. Yeah, you get cut up pretty damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a good, good back and forth fight. They do at some point manage to defeat Kurusu, I don't recall how because it's kind of chaotic yeah, during all um, this. He's a little bit more easier to beat when he finally is able to put on the Garo oh, armor. Oh, right, yeah, because they managed to. Koga manages to free the armor and transform, yeah. so that's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Then, after that, he has to fight. Like we said, the giant naked 
end boss that is a giant naked lady. Uh, to her credit, Rekka does help by uh, playing a flute, which somehow manages to free all of the souls of the fallen Akai Knights yeah. who had battled against Karma in the past, and including her father. Then all the spirits of them go into the Garo armor and it goes to God mode or something and <laughs> takes it down. <laughs> it's like one of Naruto's special, Naruto's special movie exclusive Rasengan's. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, this is movie exclusive, but I'm okay with it because it's awesome. <laughs> That's another good thing about like most of the ending ending battles for like Garo shows. They tend to give Garo some unique form that is exclusive to that circumstance, yeah. and it looks absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And this this dragon like form is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Just cuts her down, cuts her limbs off, and then does a final strike and seals her away. Yeah, and Koga and Rekka manage to escape from the mirror world before it collapses. Um, the but, priest did... Yeah, that does, was... <laughs> did Hatakiri. Yeah, Akaza does end up killing himself to give them the chance to save the day. Mm -hmm. So, he... It is a, is a sad moment. Mm -hmm. it, it... It is a sad moment, but... He helped... Save the world, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it was like a world-level threat, but, but, but it was definitely a movie-level threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, after, after that, Koga says goodbyes to Rekka and Shiguto and heads on his way. But Rekka gives him like a, this like goldfish-looking creature mm -hmm. to keep with him in case. In case he needs it, because she had been using them throughout the movie, mm -hmm. and it actually does show up in uh, the second season of Garo as a recurring element. So huh. we even get a nice post-credit scene of of Zaruba trying to come up with a name for it before settling on Kauru. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are not aware, K Kaoru was the name of the female character from the original series that uh, grew close to Koga throughout the season. <laughs> and she returns in season two. No longer a damsel in distress, thankfully. <laughs> Kept using her as bait. <laughs> I know. Garo is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I enjoyed this movie. This was a hella fun movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the horrors actually were quite terrifying looking. Yeah, again, great design just mm -hmm. in general for, throughout this movie. The, mm -hmm. the bigger budget really helps <laughs> mm -hmm. make this movie stand out visually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, the action, the acting like it was great <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't really know what else to say other than just check out Garo in general <laughs> yeah just check out the series bye <laughs> I think it was a ladybug man <laughs> uh, yeah uh, check out Garo and uh, till next time See ya. I'm Proto Man. I'm Tank. Bye. See ya. <laughs>